Okay, so this is a viewer deck submission. We had tried something similar to this on stream um, that was a little bit more controlling and a little bit less rampy. And I'm actually kind of interested to see how this build does in in comparison. So this is a big red ramp deck, basically. We've got 11 two mana pieces of ramp here with Cold Steel, Guardian, and Mind Stone. We've got eight four mana ramp spells here. And then we've got Awakened Inferno, Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, and then Sundering Stroke here at the top. And this is kind of a spicy one. Another Busted Eldraine card. Deals seven damage divided as you choose between one, two, or three targets. If at least seven red mana was spent to cast this spell, it deals seven damage to each of those permanents instead. So if you Iron Crag Feet out Sundering Stroke, you get to deal seven damage to three different things, which seems kind of sweet. So... We also have Goldspan Dragon here as a threat that ramps us into these. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games here with this and uh, see how this goes here this morning. I'm 44 years old and my wife is 43. And I used the term banger to refer to a song when we were in the car together yesterday morning. And she made fun of me the entire rest of the day. I feel like A, this is at least partially your fault. And B, her derision was entirely appropriate. <laughs> thanks for the bits of the thanks for the bits of the laugh, Boston. <laughs> All right, this hand needs some mana, but our deck is full of mana. We're on the draw. I've got Sweltering, Sweltering Suns here to uh, interact with them a little bit early. Smells like Jun Sacrifice. That's because it is not a land, but another piece of ramp here, which is nice. Listen, I would like the record to reflect I use banger as a term here as a term largely so I can be hip with the kids myself. So I would I would just like the record to reflect Boston that I have made you significantly more hip. Uh, Rune Terra on the sub surveys actually the lowest that it's been uh, to date since I started doing content and asking about it on the surveys. Um, I like their limited format though, and there was a sponsored post for Rune Terra on uh, the bounty board. So today's today's Rune Terra segment is a sponsored segment. There. While I like their limited format, it's just not quite like Runeterra, like in terms of popularity, if Magic Constructed was a 10, Runeterra Constructed would be like a 5, maybe a 6, and then like Runeterra Limited's like a 3 to a 4. So it's tough to... I mean, I, li I like Runeterra's limited format. Like I don't take sponsored segments for things that I don't like. It's just like Rune Terra's limited format also isn't popular enough on its own to justify dedicating time to it for non-sponsored segments, if that makes sense. Thank you for the 32 months, Dana, and I appreciate that. Welcome back. Now, this is a viewer submitted deck list, Hidden Flame. Also, I don't really think it's a very good comparison. So you're asking about. You're asking about Extinction Event, and I don't really think that that's comparable. So the Extinction Event deck is uh, quite a bit different than what this one is doing. Star of Extinction. Oh. Um. Yeah, Star of Extinction kills our stuff, too. You're gonna be sorry when I come back. 
should probably I should probably do a command cleanup again at some point sometime soon. <laughs> Speaking, speaking of sponsored streams for the Star Trek game. Alright, so if this dragon gets to attack again here, we have enough mana to Ugin next turn, huh? And even with them killing that, if I draw a land, we'll have enough mana to Ugin, right? So I have four, five, six, seven here. Morning, Lucas. Hey, Grapple Grapple. It's been a tough few days, but I'm COVID negative. Yeah, that's the honestly, I'm glad I'm glad you're negative. I'm glad you're you're hopefully feeling a little bit better. That's probably one of the most frustrating parts about COVID is like there's a lot of things that suck about COVID, but the the extra anxiety that that happens like I don't, maybe it's just me but the extra anxiety i've experienced every time i've the extra anxiety i've experienced every time like you cough is like you're like oh god is it is it that is this what's happening is this my life all right so i have a lot of i have a number of sequencing decisions i could make here so the the problem with dragon attack play Chandra is this goddamn card is symmetrical. So if I dragon attack play Chandra, they get three triggers and this gives them a fourth trigger and they kill my dragon. So I, th I think we're actually just casting this and minus three on the devil. Dropping off my monthly payment to keep the prime playground well kept. Thanks for the support, Moose. I appreciate that. Juan, thanks for the follow. Good morning. Is it is it allergies or am I about to die? Yeah, yeah, that that this season especially. Yeah, don't I really don't like so many of these kinds of effects aren't symmetrical anymore these days, and the fact that this one specifically is symmetrical, it's like it feels so arbitrary it feels so arbitrary don't don't we get treasure when they poke the dragon uh because of target of no just target of spell it feels so arbitrary which which stuff is symmetrical and which is it Should we minus three the Chandra so we kill the cat too? If I minus three the other way, their thing goes to the bin and then they just don't, they just don't bring the cat back in response. I guess that saves me one point on here. I don't know, Corvald from a design perspective is probably fine. How it gets used in conjunction with everything else in the set makes it pretty pretty annoying slash frustrating though. I guess if I would have Utterly is the best way to destroy things. I guess if I would have minus three the other way, this Chandra would have been plus one and I would have kept her around. Ugh, don't you hate that burnt hair smell? Anytime, anytime you get a Corvald off the board and only drew a single card is a huge win. I would love some mana. Today's my lucky day. I'm gonna minus three this and get rid of the trail of crumbs. Obviously I could just plus on the devil, but I think nixing like in the event that they start making food next turn with like a goose or something has value. I bet this matchup's probably pretty okay for us. Um, 
Oh, you know what the sideboard doesn't have? I was looking at the sideboard, pushing things around. There's no braids in the sideboard. That's probably fine. Ain't the Jun player conceded far too early there? Nah, I disagree. Ugin's really good against them. It's not, it's not like I had a short clock. I had Ugin, I had Chandra, I had two creature lands. I had I had Faceless Haven plus Guardian Idol. They're going to die real, real fast. If their hand, if their hand was blanks, they probably weren't doing much. Yeah, they knew, they knew about the Goldspan Dragon too. All right, so I think I want some of these for killing bigger Corvalds. Probably, actually, would I rather have just the sweepers at the bottom end? Is that is that where I'd rather be in life? If I'm trimming this, do I go down an iron crag feet? Seems fine. There were some draws that would have gotten them stabilized. I disagree. I think they had draws that could kill Ugin, but my closing power was very fast there. And if they didn't have an answer to one of my threats that turn, they probably were in a spot where they could recover. So, one thing I often have people go back and forth on that they try and disagree with me on is that people really love anger in this format for some reason, and I think anger is largely worse than Sweltering Suns. Obviously, I have angers in the sideboards and Sweltering Suns in my main, but I think in general, if you're playing a red deck in this format that wants a three damage sweeper like this, you're wrong to be playing anger as opposed to be playing Sweltering Suns. And the reasoning for this is very straightforward. All of the decks that you pretty much want to be exiling things against in this format have lots of ways to sacrifice their stuff. So they mitigate the one upside that this has quite frequently. So I'd much rather just be playing, I'd much rather just be playing um, Smeltering Suns for the flexibility to cycle it. Chandra out aggressively here is a little bit bad if they go land binding or land blood chief's thirst I suppose getting some amount of clock on them is nice though and like if I brick off next turn uh, Guardian Isle's 2 to activate right? yeah Oh, looks like someone's getting a little sweaty So I think to block one of these for free, obviously. And then, you know, my my six mana planeswalker here treading water with their life total against a bunch of one mana cards. So if my six mana planeswalker lives for one more turn, it will fully negate my opponent's life gain each turn from the cat of its. Yeah, honestly, the fact that this, like, and this is something we usually see from a design perspective on um, these black cards that come back from the graveyard is, at the very least, if they wanted this to block, this should come back into play tapped. Yeah, it's just, like, generally speaking, these things either say can't block or comes into play tapped. Those are, those are the two things, the two things we see. It's like, 
Is playing Ugin even good? Yeah, I, I think second charger is better, right? So like, I don't know, it's it's tough because like Ugin um or is it getting a little warm in here what's the word i'm searching for ugin um gets towards ultimate which can gain us life which is nice Yeah, not only was Christy able to get her and I vaccine appointments yesterday for next week, but she was able to get them on the day that I was planning to take off work anyways, which is awesome. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be off work next Wednesday. Honestly, I think we're probably dead here. I don't know. I don't know how we beat this. I get I guess we could draw graph diggers, Gage. I think Fife, sir. I tweeted. I tweeted the picture. I think Fife, sir. All right. What did past Jeff say? Yeah, Fife, sir. I'm just gonna concede. They're just like pretty unlikely to beat triple oven. I don't really want to wait the next three minutes to wait for my opponents to sit there and activate their oven. They're gonna draw six cards here. Let's take game three on the play. Historic is markedly less fun in the week and a half to two week, first two weeks of the month after the ladder resets. The second, I have a note, notably have more fun playing historic in the second two weeks when the tryhards have made it to mythic and we just get to play sweet decks against other sweet decks. I'm not expecting wizards to make any changes to the historic ban list, but I definitely think the format would be better off if they did. Morning D20. Note that the vaccine does not make Judge Sack more fun to play against. Ain't that the truth? I mean, I actually think our deck has a decent food matchup. Like, and again, like, I don't actually think the food matchup, the food deck's overbearing in terms of power level. I think it's just, like, pretty tedious to play against. I think you ban the cat. I think the oven has other uses for in deck building that you can that you can use it in reasonably and cats useless without the oven. Would it be difficult to program loops in MTGA? Yes. Recording programming macro recordings is not trivial. Um the big the big thing arena needs to speed things up is always yield triggers. Double oven cat. Double oven thought sees, sure. Oh, BT dubs. I want to make sure I mention at least once per deck so it's in every video today. If you're someone that supports my content, the subscriber survey for April is uh, is up in the Discord server. It was also emailed to everyone if you have emails enabled from Twitch and you're a Twitch sub.
If you haven't, if you haven't done one of my sub surveys before, it's not a Watsy survey. It is super quick. I think this one's like three multiple choice answers and one optional fill in the blank. Basically just ask the folks that pay my bills what type of content they like that I'm making so I can balance my content appropriately based on what people who pay me want to see. The two things I'm looking to measure on this specific survey are what interest people have in standard versus historic after the new set releases. So I'm definitely planning to do some amount of standard. How much will depend on what feedback on the survey looks like. Sad. Yeah, with without question, regardless of the results of the survey, um, the first two days after the set release before the open will be 100% historic, but we will be dipping back into standard the Monday after. So how, how much we dip back into standard will be dictated by, by the survey. Hey, Blue Fire, thanks for the two thirds here. Yeah, and if you're someone whose sub was lapsed so you didn't get the Twitch email, just sign, pop on in to the subs Discord server. And you'll be able to grab the link there from the, from the announcements channel. And this is, honestly, the food variation of Jund. One of the reasons why it's become so popular is Graph Digger's Cage is so omnipresent in Historic as a format now that, um, you know, having main deck binding as a way to answer Cage is huge. And you don't have company that gets shut off by Cage. Your Trail of Crumbs still work. Your Corvald still work. So this, this evolution of Jund is definitely a direct response to... Graph Digger's Cage being omnipresent in this format. And honestly, like this game that we saw play out here, Graph Digger's Cage isn't even really very good against the opponent's archetype because of how many answers they readily have available. The four mana less than two CMC sweeper is going to be sweet. I don't even think that really solves the problems that you have against this archetype a lot of the time. Not killing. Like, I've seen a lot of people talking about that card and like, yeah, it kills Oven and Trail. It like kills the tedious parts, but like Corvald Mayhem Devil are still going to put you in a little box. We're in lands are good, spells are good situation now. No, there's a fourth Ugin I can draw next turn. Or they could thought seize me and then and then I could draw land. Does the sweeper look decent against Auras? No, because the way that sweeper interacts with Kaya's ghost form, Kaya's ghost form still brings the creature back, chat. In interaction is not really good against Auras because of Kaya's ghost form and how many cards they draw. The best, the best answer, the best answer to Auras is playing a more linear deck that races them. It's playtime. That's kind of a spell in the land. Yeah, kind of. I'm going to have to down tick Ugin to exile the Wellspring next turn, so she's going to go away. But she did kill Woestrider, and she should make mana for this. Huh. They know about Ugin. supposed to draw with her actually i have eight mana anyways yeah i think this was wrong i think i was supposed to plus chandra to draw with her because then if she bricks she does two and then they've taken five for the turn well, i guess we're not racing them anyways right they just have infinite food
But I mean, like, even pacifism isn't that good, right? Like, they have the protection creature to make pacifism fall off, and they still get to sit there and draw cards. Okay. Like I said, I don't think this matchup's likely bad for us. I think I think Ugin decks have a pretty okay matchup against the food deck. Just like sitting there, sitting there waiting for them to diddle their cat in and out of their graveyard is kind of annoying. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat in the oven. Do 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 do. Well, so Modern Bogles plays, um, Modern Bogles plays, uh, what's it called? Totem Armor. All right, chat. This is our match for the Diamond Four Rink Floor. Blue White is coming for us. All right, so if they pass with Sensor Mana up here, how do we feel about the big brain play of Iron Crag Feet? So this way we get to cast Chandra around Sensor. Like, obviously I'm going to get Dovin's vetoed and feel sad here. We did sick. Especially with Chandra in play now to make some mana too. Look at that, chat. Our turn three play around sensor play was so big brained and excellent. Yep, you're going down. Opponent casts he massive healing self. Well, the good news is when they Tefri down tick on this Chandra, my guardian idol gets to kill Tefri. Alright, our guardian idols are ready to punch the clock and go to work here, chat. That's terrifying. Ugin! Ugin! Oh, today's my lucky day.
skip to the good part. I think there's a good chance we're in garbage time right now. I mean, they have they have three mana up, Jet. They have five cards in hand. The odds of uh, Ugin resolving here are basically zero. All right. Told you, we're in we're in garbage time. Can't win. Thanks for the two months, Francos. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Probably just Iron Greg feet out, right? I think getting to my spells. I think this is probably enough ramp. Just want more cards that can have a meaningful impact on the on the board. Yeah, I, I I agree, Ellie. I think I think Shark Typhoon's a really offensive card. <laughs> as someone as someone who was pretty high on the design when it first came out, I think Shark Typhoon's cost of opportunity to include is too low in proportion to the amount of closing power and flexibility that it that it does. Yeah, I, I agree. I I originally really liked it uh, from a design perspective. But the way I've seen it, the way it actually plays out in practice feels uh, really bad. Well, so like questions like that, questions like that are, are bad faith and bullshit, Ransack. The idea that like I have to choose between two different toxic designs, you're like, well, Jeff, would you rather eat this pile of vomit or this pile of dog poop for lunch, Jeff? You have to pick between dog poop and vomit, Jeff. And it's like, well, what if I just had something that tasted good instead? What if instead of choosing between two awful things, you gave me something nice? Don't make me, don't make me pick between two terrible designs. Shark, Ty Shark Typhoon is just so good against a bunch of the things you'd normally want to be good against control. It just fixes so many of their problems. I think level up will come back as a mechanic in D&D. Yeah, maybe. This isn't a fight. No time for a break. Why that card's not good against so like questions like that like whenever I talk about shark typhoon people show a fundamental misunderstanding of why shark typhoon is good stifle effects aren't good against shark typhoon chat shark typhoon is good I'm excited to get aether gust in here no gust big 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 hits um shark typhoon is good because it two for ones the opponent chat if you stifle Shark Typhoon making a token, 
That's no different than casting a Doom Blade on the token, and they still drew a card, and you spent a card. Shark Typhoon is good and powerful because it's always card advantage, and it comes at no cost. It creates a threat you have to answer, and even if you answer it, you're down a card because you spent a card answering their cantrip. Don't make another move. That's, that's why Shark Typhoon is good. Yeah, that too. It's also a flash threat. So if you're interacting with their flash threat on your end of turn, then they're going to untap and get to do something, get to have, have mana to stick a threat. We're just dead at this point. They've activated Death Raid three or four times. This game's not going to end for like 40 more turns, but we can't win anymore. You don't get how Stifle interacts with Shark Typhoon. Shark Typhoon is two triggers, Hidden Flame. Cycling is a trigger, and there's a second trigger that creates a shark token when you cycle. You need something like Whirlwind Denial to one for one a Shark Typhoon. Yeah, or summer, summary dismissal. Very, very narrow cards. And again, at that point, those are cards that are not only narrow and pretty resource inefficient, they're things that they're baiting you to do on the end of your turn. Well, so you can't take infinite terms with Primal Amulet and Time Walk because Time Walk doesn't shuffle back into your deck. Nexus of Fate was a uniquely offensive extra turns card because it's self-enabling because it reshuffled. Thanks for the follow, Kelly. Good morning. And like, again, you think about just think about the cards people are suggesting we play in order to stop Shark Typhoon and think about like how clunky and expensive these cards are to answer a can trip. You're like, and that's that in and of itself is the power of Shark Typhoon, right? Like you're suggesting we contort our deck and play these terrible cards to answer their can trip. Captain Corgi, good morning, good morning. Ooh. Ooh. What's that shark typhoon from? That's an Ikoria card, right? Oh, this if I recall correctly. Put restrictive, mostly dead cards in your deck to answer a universally good card. Yeah, exactly, Edman. Exactly, you get it. All right, so my opponent did a whole lot of nothing and conceded. They showed us... Um, I assume they're playing Teamer Adventures. One of the people at the last championship weekend played Teamer Adventures. Honestly, this might just be a click-submit situation. We mostly just want to race them. I don't have ways to kill Clover. I have an okay amount of interaction. The main deck for Innkeeper. I don't want to board this in because they're a stomp deck. Hey, good morning, Gilt. Thanks for 11 months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. Morning, Roy G. Two, three, four. Do, 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 do. We technically need one more. Ooh, that'll give us. That'll give us the turn four. Say so we need we need one more piece of mana to get this on turn four. D beard. Good morning. Good morning.
<laughs> Uh-oh, chat. Uh-oh. I typoed Haley's name. I typoed Haley's name in my last post on the subs discord, and Christy saw. I'm gonna fix it. I fixed it. Do you think she'll notice that I fixed it? Tag, tag her and let her know. Good point. Good call. Good call. Start screaming. I know I'm on track. This will be easy. When we um, when we were uh picking out names. For Haley, we had a we had a spreadsheet with all the different ways you could spell her name, believe it or not. Uh, opponents not playing collecting company. They don't have enough hits. They play they play innkeeper as their card advantage. For the, for the record, my daughter's name is spelled H-A-I-L-E-Y. And in, in part, we chose that spelling because it has the most unique letters in it without, uh, without being something super weird, like Haley, H-E-I-G-L-E-I-G-H, like Lampton posted above. We're, I have, I have, for people that are new to the channel, I have a kindergartner and a first grader as well. And the way, the way most children start learning letters is by writing their name a bunch. So we wanted to put slightly more letters in her name so that when she learns to write her name, she learns, she learns to memorize more letters to start. Tricky, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's the long con, chat. We're inv invested your children, they are our future. Is this the Auras deck? Probably. Okay, so we literally have to Ugin minus one and get rid of the ghost form, right? Because otherwise they just get to keep recasting the ghost form. And now this gets to attack Ugin. Dad, I thought we were tight. Dad, I expect this nonsense from Twitch chat, but you're my dad. It's okay. I fixed it. I fixed it, Haley. <laughs> I fixed it. Your name's right now, okay? Dad, when's my birthday? When is your birthday? Uh, 614. Dad, when's my brother's birthday? Uh, 515. How about the other one? Uh, 2-9. You always forget. 2-9. Two 2-9. Nine. Two nine. I got it right. Look at that, champ. Pass the pop quiz. When's my birthday? Uh, 322. <laughs> Should I give Twitch at the year? No. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> giving out their day of birth is not really sensitive information. Anybody can figure that out. See that Twitch chat? I passed the pop quiz. Passed the pop quiz. <laughs> when enchanted creature dies, return the card to its owner's hand. Good lord for when four copies of ghost form aren't enough. The day we met, we actually met on my 16th birthday. So that one's really easy.
So we're dead, right? No, I could draw a second new good. Jeff probably doesn't know my social security number. You probably don't even know yours. I know both of ours and the kids. Listen, I know my social security number, but sometimes I get it mixed up with my DCI number, okay? <laughs> it's true. It's happened before. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a happy baby. You're so happy when you sleep all night. <laughs> that's uh that's a lethal. Oh, take a wiggly baby. <coughs> Maybe the IRS will Bill Watts see you. For for a long time, I spent way more time typing my DCI number than uh, than my social. In was it the year before Jake was born that it was fifty out of fifty two weeks that you traveled? It wasn't fifty out of fifty two. It was like twelve out of thirteen in a three month period. Yeah. Yeah. Now your dad's home all the time, and it's great. You want this keyboard real bad? Do we need some big Haley? She has more hair than you. Chat, I officially have the least hair in my family again after after my haircut yesterday. You no longer have the least hair, baby girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she loves this. You like the big baby on the screen? Dad, put it back. Dad, put it back. You'll never lose that designation again. No, probably not. <laughs> she does she does have very pretty eyes. <laughs> yeah. Hey Joe, thanks for the thanks for the twelve months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I think we just torch the Serium here because it lets us get the Chandra into play for the turn. See ya. Yay, ghost form. And for the record, ghost form saves it from being exiled too, so anger does not take care of it. I do have enough mana here to ghost form our anger plus seer though. So I could do I could do that at least. So we'll anger, clear it, and then soul seer, get rid of it. Mega Vega! Thank you for the entire year. Welcome back. Uh-oh. Angry baby. Yeah, she's mad you won't let her play. <laughs> she really she really likes the keyboard and mouse chip. Don't we want to save? Don't we want to spear first because of Morris? Yeah, probably. Because she's trying to look at herself. Uh, so if I do this, I can't also do this. Love you, girls. Do we just get this down? Getting this ticking up gives it more loyalty to down tick with later, which is valuable. Anyone who stands in my way is getting sick. Let's get I wonder if we can win this game without drawing Ugin. I feel like I'd be surprised if that happens. Well, they have Claim Fame in their deck too. Family game stream when? Uh, maybe at some point. Okay, so... I have to cash this in, basically, right? We have to kill this and then down tick this. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> bye, bye 
Board game, board game streams logistically are difficult because it's hard. It's hard to translate what's happening in the board game to people at home without a lot of work. Actually, one thing I thought about, Christy, Christy and I play balloons with the kids pretty consistently. That could be, that's something I thought we could stream our family balloon session at some point. Yeah, balloons, balloons is great. And all, my children are spoiled and have cell phones, so, um... If you buy one copy of Balloons on Android, you can share your one paid for copy with everybody in your family. So that's definitely been the best five bucks I've spent. Just for the record, Don Tron, I timed out your message because the generally speaking, I'm very positive about promoting other creators, but the specific creator you just mentioned there is an incredibly toxic individual who I don't want mentioned in my chat. Hope it's not too and if people are to say, well, who is it? That's, I'm not gonna repeat it because repeating their names like that is why they're toxic. They just want, they just want people to click on their stuff. Maybe I'm supposed to leave... Maybe I'm supposed to spend a treasure and leave an extra stone man up for Faceless Haven. This game's been a pretty good example of why interaction isn't the way you beat this Aura's deck. I can jump with the idol until they find a flying flying spell, yeah. How do you beat it? Things like Saltai Ultimatum and Goblins have good auras matchups. The only, the only decks that really have good Auras matchups are decks that are able to race them. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I have a one, one point short. All right, flying no longer does it, but life gain still beats us. Should we have attacked with the 2-2? You mean the previous turn? Maybe? Uh, friendo. Oh, they're can tripping. They're recasting Sentinel Eyes because they're dead on board. No. No, they're they're dead and they're trying to cantrip out of it. They they intentionally killed their Saram to put an enchant creature in the graveyard. They could try and draw another card. Yeah. Wow, I can't believe we won that without Nugan. Think I'm happy with how we boarded. Do I want Sundering Stroke? I don't think so. Huh. 
pu 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 poker face pu pu poker face ma 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 Opponents mulligan to seven. I'm gonna go ahead and mulligan to six here. Is cage not good here? I guess it's okay. I'm gonna try and draw a land on the draw. I mean, I don't think this is a bad keep. There's a chance that I brick and miss, but you don't really want to mulligan to five against the Thoughtseize deck. Like, you miss you miss on this hand, you know, 50% of the time. What's the what's the actual hyper geo there? We're at 20. 54 cards in my deck, 21 land, sample size, two. Yeah, we're better, we're better, we're better than a coin flip to draw, to draw land there. We're 60, 63% to draw land, keeping, keeping that hand, that hand on the drive. So, I think, I think our odds of winning against the Thoughtseize deck on a five card hand are definitely lower than that. And that hand's very reasonable if we draw the land. So I think keeping that hand is fine. Can I explain what I just did? I used a hyper geometric distribution calculator to compute the odds that I drew a land in two cards. Because I was had two draw steps. And if you're not sure, yeah, if you're not sure what a hyper geometric distribution calculator is, here's a short YouTube video explaining how to use it for card games. Fair, fair, I should probably update that video. When is this video from? This video was published on October 14th, 2016. So the audio quality is much lower and I am a very different person. <laughs> I think we're ditching Iron Craig here. What game is that border even from? Yeah, that's from Hex TCG. Rip, rip Hex TCG. That's right, baby Jacob times. Yeah, Jacob Jacob was two. Declan was one. Cast Desperate Ritual. Well, we didn't get hit by a cast out, glass half full. Oh, you asked about predictions, Neil. I don't know, it's just like another thing. If I'm being honest, I don't really trust the mods to do predictions in a way that I would be happy with. And I don't really wanna be responsible for managing predictions myself. They, act, they actually changed that, Sheriff. So they changed it so mods can participate in predictions, but if they participate, they can't set the answer at the end of it.
All right, well, them breaking off is real good for us. I know. I think I think with with deck deck voting deck voting being something we do somewhat consistently that's plenty in terms of letting people do things with channel points. All right. So, we cut Iron Craig feet and sweltering suns here against control. I just want to increase my number of individually individual quality cards. How much historic are we doing today? I think I'm going to do one more deck after this. I'm going to play for about three or four hours. Is it tough? I don't, I don't know what we're playing though. This is, this was a, this one was a donation deck. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I have enough decks loaded up to do deck voting. playing Bioshock on the PS on the PS5 bread and my my ability to play a shooter with the noob stick has improved gradually the more I do it it's obviously not as accurate but I play games casually and I find the controller more fun to play with casually so the, the problem is a lot of the historic decks I have built at this point I really want to try mystical archive cards out in them Which is part of the reason why we did some cube to fill time. Because like I'm re I'm ready for today's today's the last day we're playing historic without mystical archives. My two streams before the set releases next week are going to be deck building streams. The band party deck was real bad, games, right? I think the meta will change with the archives. I have no idea. I know I'm super interested in playing with archives, though, so. Are we dead? It feels like we're dead. Legion, Legion War Boss seems very bad here in the face of Nissa and friends. And this is this is the trouble with playing ramp cards, right? Is like these cards aren't lands, but we kind of cut lands to play them. So like hands like this just aren't keepable, right? And we have with like eleven ramp spells are nice for consistently having a ramp spell on two, but in terms of making your deck consistent, they make your deck a lot less consistent. So if you look if you look at a lot of the like ramp decks into Ugin that I've built recently, they all play 26 lands or so. Because you really need to hit your first three to five land drops or more consistently. J Rong, thanks for the follow. I added I added one land to this deck. It's possible I should add two. I think we're at 22 right now. It's very possible I should cut the 11th mana rock for a 23rd land. Or cards you'd add to the Jeskai Tempo deck. I would encourage you to watch the wrap-up segment for the last time we played the Jeskai Tempo deck where we explicitly talked about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you in on a dirty little secret, chat. You know what the first thing I do is when I revisit an archetype that I've built, that I've played on stream before in the past? I open my past YouTube video and I skip to the last section to listen to what past Jeff had to say in the wrap up because present Jeff has lived a lot of life between when I have played that deck and now. Remember chat, being smart isn't about having all of the answers. It's about being capable of finding them when you need to find them. Reference materials are great.
That's why whenever, for people aren't familiar with my background, uh, I have a master's degree in mathematics and in a previous lifetime, I, uh, I taught at a couple of different college and universities, different mathematics classes. And one of, one of the things I always made sure to do in the classes that I taught was I didn't require students to memorize things. They could always have at least a sheet of notebook paper with them when they took exams. Remember, memorization is the lowest form of learning. It's the equivalent of mental masturbation. It's pointless. Thanks for the follow, Netferax. I now teach at the College of Hooglandia, something like that. Telling Twitch chat about your masters as if we all don't have PhDs. That's true. That's true. <clears throat> also, fun fact as a as a sneaky, sneaky teacher tactic, telling telling students they were allowed to have a sheet of notebook paper with them for their exam was a way to tricking them into studying for their exam. Because if you tell students, okay, you could bring a sheet of notebook paper with you with whatever you want written on it, they'll sit there and try and min-max and figure out, okay, what's the best stuff to put on my sheet of notebook paper? So, like, not only do you make the students not do the tedious thing of memorize a bunch of crap, you also trick them into studying for your exam. Alright, we're super dead again. Dark teachers make it to learn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a lands. Add a, add a minimal. I want a 23rd here. I think we're gonna cut the, the Cold Steel Heart, honestly. Uh, kinda, I kinda like Guardian Idols of Attack. 90% of teaching is tricking students into doing what's best for them. Yeah, big mood. <laughs> big mood. The notebook paper is a metaphor for the brain. Something like that. Something like that. We had Shatter Skull. That's not a terrible thought. Nah, I think I'm just gonna add the Faceless Haven. Faceless Haven. Actually, if I'm adding a Faceless Haven, maybe I do get rid of this and keep the Gold, gold Steel Heart. Yeah, that's probably the case. I forgot we weren't done four of these already. Any tips on becoming a Pokemon Master? It depends on what you consider to be a Pokemon Master. As someone who grew up as a child in the 90s playing an unhealthy amount of Pokemon video games, uh, Pokemon Go will be the first time I ever complete a Pokedex for a region. I am one Pokemon short of having all 151 Pokemon from the first region in Pokemon Go, chap. And if you're a sub or a supporter who plays Pokemon Go, we have a very active group of us in the subs Discord server if you want to chat about the game or participate in remote raids on occasion. Myself and my wife and a bunch of other folks remote raid there very consistently. What am I missing? I think I'm missing um, Vile Plume, if I recall. If, if I recall correctly. You're missing Taurus? Are you not from the United States? You know, Taurus was a US regional one, right? USA, USA. All right, so Florida gets Carvine. Okay. 
I think for Iron Crag feet into Chandra minus three, she'll get eaten by the Faceless Haven. And then we'll play Gold Span into Ugin. Stay back. I'm an explosively good pirate. Do you think Chandra getting eaten by Faceless Haven is a Wizards approved storyline? Or is that one not okay just like Chandra and Nissa? We got another stomp here. Ah, haste creature. I can always do better next time. Okay, so huh. I feel like my Red Bull just went all over my desk. I try. I try. Um I think I'm supposed to just try and stem the bleeding here and play Torch of Defiance and kill the Bone Crusher Giant. It could also be right to play Goldspan Dragon on defense and expect to trade that with Faceless Haven. So that way I can Chandra, Awakened Inferno, Downtick, clear all their creatures and play next turn. I think that's actually the line. I think we do this on defense and pass. Okay, we're gonna die to Embercleave. Oh, they didn't cast Ember Cleave. Is their deck broken? I think their deck might be broken. Are we gonna win this game? You should pop pop on the Discord server, Azuzel. Not only do we have a group that coordinates in there, but we have a Google Doc in there where we all um explosions are more fun. We have a Google Doc in there where we all have uh, friend codes, so we send gifts to each other so we can do raids better. So I could play Ugin there by attacking, but then I get hit by Faceless Haven. I'd prefer not to get hit by Faceless Haven because I'm at seven and they have a Ram and Apper runes. just killing this so that way they can't push damage next turn i just want to be as defensive as possible here try not to get burned out we're gonna have a relatively quick closing power once we add ugin to the board here You think we won? No, this game's not over yet. My opponent could feel running burn spells here, right? Do I have them dead next turn? I might have them dead next turn. Yeah, they're dead, right? So this is seven. Yeah, and this is three. This is two. Man, we hit that we hit that corner running, chat. Let's get toasty. Let's get toasty. The old seven ball to the dome. Is Ugin out in voice lines? They're real quiet, Brad. There were there were a couple of, of low voice lines in there. You tried the Lab of Legend mode, it's super fun. That's the single player mode, right? I'm not really huge on, on single player modes in card games. Things like things like Slay the Spire just aren't quite my cup of tea. I like the expedition mode. We're gonna play some expedition for them this afternoon.
If I'm gonna play, if I'm gonna play a single, a single player game, I personally like my single player games to to be story driven. So like something like uh, Griftlands or um, what was the other one we played? We played another one, but games, games, card games like Griftlands are single player games. I don't mind. There's like a story and characters and flavor built into it, but just like randomly beating up an AI doing doing wacky things just isn't really my cup of tea. That, that being said, um, I actually would, would not be surprised if it ends up being more profitable and makes Runeterra more popular long term to focus on single player stuff. Like I, 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 with how saturated the PVP card game market is, there really isn't a like triple A company making a Slay the Spire style game. I would, would not be surprised if Runeterra found more success focusing on that type of gameplay as opposed to PvP stuff. I can't keep a hand at seven without an anger or sweltering suns here, right? I have six of those post board. I'm gonna keep this on six though. Hearthstone did a dungeon mode and it was pretty fun. Yeah, but Hearthstone dungeon mode from my understanding is like nothing comparable to is not comparable to Slay the Spire, right? Or those other those other games that do longer runs like that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Runeterra does co-op. They do co-op for their single player stuff too. Their co-op single player co-op story mode. Always play your Mind Stone last when you have other mana rocks because Mind Stone comes into play un uh, comes into play untapped. Hearthstone Dungeon Mode lacked replayability. Games like Slayer built on. Yeah, that was my understanding too. That was not one of my six sweepers. Maybe, maybe I should have gone to five this game. Am I ever going to revisit Grifflands? Probably not. Probably not as a non-sponsored segment, Einstein. My enjoyment of games like that isn't high enough that it's worth the um, non-magic non style content has to be, uh, is not nearly as popular. It's my, yup, you're going down. Oh, I think we're dead, right? <sighs> playing, playing, playing card games, even single player games, like doesn't, doesn't let me like turn my brain off and relax quite as much as playing something like Bioshock or um, what was the other one we just played near does. We just kind of hack and slash through things and enjoy a story. Card game, card games require a lot of active thinking, even the single player ones. And my non magic games that I play, generally speaking, especially ones you have to be actively engaged in, are are ones where I just get to like chill more more than that. Says to Matt, thanks for the fourteen months. Welcome back. Are we finding Bioshock so far? It's a lot of fun. It's been a while since I played a shooter. Deus Ex was the last shooter that I played. And the story, the story's good. We did, we did, is ending E the one, spoilers, ending E is the one where you shoot the credit scenes? If so, yes, we did that. Oh. Elvish Rage. Thank you for the three quarters of a year. I don't think I'm doing a cube today. I might do one more cube next week. This is close. I technically have three lands. Uh, 
Un unsurprisingly, the second cube video did a lot worse than the first cube video did on YouTube, which is one of the metrics that I use to measure how popular things are. And that, that's usually the case. You usually can't judge how successful or not something is by the first time you do it, because the first time you do anything, it's novel and fancy, and more people will check it out than they will subsequent attempts. Uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, at the risk of angering many nerds on the internet, was one of my least favorite games I've played out of the modern video games that I've played. I think it does a number of things that are fundamentally flawed and bad. Zelda, Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of the only games I've tried, I've started and really tried to enjoy that uh, I ended up not finishing. Weapon, both we weapon durability is bad. Weapon durability was largely unenjoyable for me, and the combat in that game it, I would describe as tedious at best. I just don't like, I just don't like playing limited for the most part, Hidden Flame. So like I don't I don't not play magic like Magic Limited would be less popular on my channel, but I, I largely don't play it because I don't like Magic's normal limited formats. Magic's normal normal low power limited formats I don't find very enjoyable. <sighs> Are we playing gold span on defense again? I think we might be. I mean, you're allowed to like Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild's a wildly popular game. I just think weapon durability is a shitty mechanic for encouraging players to use lots of different weapons. And I also didn't care for the combat system. The puzzles in Breath of the Wild were good. From a, from a puzzle game perspective, it was reasonable. Open world games are all the same with different skins. That's such a terrible, just completely untrue tank take. Immortal, Immortal Phoenix Rising is on my list of games to play. Makes me excited to hear people say good things about it. I'm gonna get to that one at some point. If you think all open world games are the same, you probably aren't very bright or haven't played a good good selection of open world games. The idea that Horizon Zero Dawn, Witcher 3, and Zelda Breath of the Wild are all the same is just like objectively incorrect and silly to say. It's, oh, it's okay to not like things, chat. It's okay to let other people like things that you don't like. It's not okay to make up silly stuff that's just a lie. Nobody tells me what to time to fight fire with fire. Them attacking my planeswalker here is huge for us. Not quite enough mana for, for Papa Ukin. We get to Chandra here and clear these. End up playing Subnautica to the end. No, I really didn't find Subnautica very enjoyable. We only did one session with that one. I know that's, that's another one I know. I know a lot of people like, but I just couldn't get through that one. Land. 
Land, puppy. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna have time to pivot here again, chat. I, I guess we are at five. A little, little bit scary here. We're at five because of the Ramadap runes, but we've got all the super friends here. I think the puzzles were easily the best part about Breath of the Wild. My my big so for me from a pure game design standpoint, in my opinion, the best thing about open world games is that they generally speaking allow a player to play the game in the way that they enjoy. And the reason why weapon durability is a bad feature in an open world game, in my opinion, is weapon durability is a way that the game designers prevent the player of the open world game from playing the game in a way that they enjoy. I didn't attack with the Haven because my Ugin is ready to ultimate, and I'd rather not die to a 2-2 two, two, two haste creature plus a deal 3. So, durability in Witcher is not comparable to durability in Breath of the Wild, if you haven't played them both, TDM. Yeah, yeah, so like, Witcher, when I when I, when I I say durability in that context, I'm not talking about Witcher, Skyrim, weapon durability, or generic RPG weapon durability. For people that haven't played Breath of the Wild, your weapons break and you can't fix them. You can't go to a smith and repair them. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not talking about it generically. I'm talking about the game designers force you to use a variety of weapons instead of the ones you like be, by making those weapons break in a way you can't fix them. And I'm, I'm someone where when I play a game like like Witcher or like Bioshock or you know most most single player games right like these games offer you a variety of ways to interact with the world and complete your tasks and I'll try a bunch of them and then I'll settle into oh like to use Bioshock for example right now you get two weapons and two spells queued up on your actives I'm using the pistol and a long gun and I'm using a shock spell and a raven spell and I tried a bunch of them, and those are the two I found that I liked. So I'm using those two a bunch, and I'll probably finish my playthrough using those, those four items. Because that's how I enjoy playing games. I want to find a couple, and I want to get good with them and practice those ones specifically and learn their combat patterns. So when a game like Breath of the Wild says, Jeff, you're not allowed to play the game in the way that you like, you have to do what we want you to do, that doesn't that doesn't connect for me. Fable, thanks for the follow. Good morning. What do I think about Dark Souls? I think games that waste your time as a feature as a feature to punish you aren't worth my time as an adult with three children who has limited gaming time. If a if a game wants me to master a boss fight or a combat style, you sh they, it better respawn me at the start of that boss fight when I die, as opposed to starting me back 20 minutes in the past and making me fight my way back or run my way back to that boss fight. I know that that's a lot of people's kink, and if you enjoy Dark Souls, more power to you. But like, I just, I just would much rather like you're. Uh, we don't kink shame here. If you're into like your video game being your BDSM and punishing you, more power to you. That's not what I want out of a video game. I don't. I don't want my video games to spank me, chat. 
I want video games to tell me a story and give me satisfying combat and make me feel like my character is progressing in power level. What are the odds this is our last turn? Non-zero. Non-zero chance our opponent just casts an ultimatum and kills us here. This type of matchup is pretty tough. We don't really have meaningful interaction. We just basically have to race them. This type of matchup is why I have Legion War bosses in our sideboard, so we can apply more pressure post-board. Grapple, grapple. Thanks for the sub-gift. And again, like, honestly, you know, video games are a lot like magic formats, right? Like, not every style of video game needs to appeal to every type of person. I can appreciate that some people want to be punished by their video games, even if I don't want to be. That doesn't mean, like, like my dislike of Dark Souls as a game doesn't mean Dark Souls is a bad game. It just means Dark Souls isn't a game that I personally want to play. We played either of the new Spider-Man games from Sony. Yeah, I played uh, Miles Morales on stream, and I plan to play. I plan to play the the PS4 one at some point too. Miles Morales was really good though. Yep, I like I like that one a lot. Okay, and then I can Iron Craig feed into Awakened Inferno here. A sick sequence. This is my mana, it is large. And no, is it just me, or is it getting a little warm in here? Time to get a little sweaty. Voltanix, thanks for the follow. So, something near is a good example of this hidden flames, and this is this is something where one thing I will say that I think where Dark Souls games obje objectively fail, I think it is a failure of game design to not include scaling difficulty in your video games in 20, in 2020 and 2021. The only reason to not include scaling difficulties in your games in 2021 is because you are lazy or you want to gatekeep and keep people from enjoying your games. There's, there's no reason to artificially gate people out of being able to enjoy your games based on a dexterity requirement. I, honestly, it's kind of ableist in a way when you, when you really think about it. This was a waste of my time. You're telling, you're telling people that don't have a particular physical dexterity that they're not allowed to enjoy or play your game. Are they dead? Maybe. Missed it by this much, chat. Missed it by this much. <laughs> All right, so we have Legion War Boss, and we have a couple of Roiling Vortexes. Worth noting here, Graph Digger's Cage does not impact Sultai Ultimatum. Do not board it in here. Sweltering Sun's not particularly exciting. Sundering Stroke's been, been super, super lackluster in the games that we've played. I guess it technically has helped us with a little bit of reach, but yeah, this this hits ultimatum. Ultimatum is casting spells for free, so this tends them when they ultimate them. <sighs> I 
Stroke, stroke was the term of the submission. So this was, this was a viewer submitted big red list. This is not a deck that I built. We're not doing all viewer decks anymore, but I am still taking some of them. The Jund or Golgari Rock deck. Uh, I don't think green-based fair mid-range decks are likely to be playable in Historic until we get Tireless Tracker. Even then, they might not still be playable, but they really need some kind of some kind of slot like that. Yeah, the Rune Terra segment today is a Twitch bounty board sponsored segment. Benes, we're gonna play some play some Expedition. Uh, you can report players for roping. There's just not an in-client report function for players because Magic Software. I think Jund in Modern is unfair. I don't understand your comment or question or how Modern pertains to what we're talking about. To be, to, as a heads up Luna Hero, I'm gonna do Fenex Rising at some point. It's probably gonna be a, be a hot second. I've got a few other games in my, my queue ahead of it. Ink, we torch Defiance on three. I guess, I, I guess. There's an incentive to do this to play around Disruption now, right? Jawari Disruption and Sunstar cards they could have. Probably just have Growth Spiral, but... It's close, it's close which of these I want to play first anyway, so I might as well lead on this one because it plays around the counter spell. I mean, Jund isn't very good in Modern, Silver Oak. The answer, the answer to your question is that Jund's not very good in Modern. <laughs> so I wouldn't I wouldn't conclude that Jund is an unfair deck. I would conclude that Jund's not very good. People people play Jund anyways despite it not being very good. And that's something that you need to understand about non-originating formats is people people play decks that aren't very good even in large numbers just because they enjoy the play styles of them. I mean, there's, there's a reason why a running meme in the Magic community is if Magic was really paid to win, foil Jund players would have the highest win rate in the, in the format, right? Hey, Alright, Chad, I have a question. If Chandra makes mana for Sundering Stroke, does this count as Chandra stroking Nissa? I don't understand this interface. It's so weird that it makes me pick numbers on each of these and then and then it does damage to all of them. That's such a weird interface. I think Yikes, so this be probably means they have another Nissa. You ask a dumb magic question, always. What are we looking at top deck here? Honestly, another strokes, Fleet Lethal. It's Mardu Vehicles, the Jund of Historic. Uh, I mean, there isn't really a... Mardu Vehicles isn't really an established archetype in this format. There, it, there isn't a... Yeah, what's the best way to put it? Jund Food is the closest thing to a fair mid-range deck Jund has. Oh, today's my lucky day. 
So I Iron Crag feeded there before I chandra because if I hit a a stroke or a Ugin, I wanted to be able to cast it. Grixis is the Jund in that it is a bad deck. It's a deck that people play that isn't actually good. That's fair. It's a good assessment. And there's a good good chance that we're just dead here again from this point. Again, the fact that like our deck doesn't have a particularly fast clock, we don't have discard spells or counter spells means that this style of matchup tends to just be very bad for us in general. <laughs> My army will envelop this world. When your opponent's hand is so good, they just don't bother activating their golos, so they'd rather cast spells. Guess you don't need me anymore. Okay, I mean, I guess because they didn't leave this back, if I draw a a deal three here, this guardian. Oh, well, they shocked. They have a counter spell. Must they must have a counter spell, right? I just hit their face, right? It's like, hope they don't have a counter spell next turn. That's the play to win line. and shine survey says okay Yeah, I think they maybe forgot about the Guardian Idol. Are we gonna get a game three here? Definitely, definitely feels like we stole this one. Definitely feels like we stole this one. Pull the, pull the sneaky on him. Well, shit. They're at one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a draw step here, but statistically we're dead. Trickery is just a hobby. Chaos is my career. And away you go.
objective. So, feel like this set went went about how I expected it to go. Um, the TLDR of this archetype, and we've played similar ones like this in the past, is that if your sweltering suns and your three mana sweep the board effects aren't good in a matchup, that matchup's probably bad for you. And there's a lot of matchups where that's just the case at Historic. Um, I think Iron Crag Feet is kind of a trap card in decks like this. Um, the stuff that you're ramping into isn't good enough, even three turns or two turns or whatever you get it ahead of curve. And playing effects like this along with all of this ramp means your deck simultaneously feels like it has too much mana and not enough mana at the same time. Because, for example, there were a number of games in this set where we had to mulligan six or seven card hands where we had one land and, like, a mana rock and an iron crag feet, or one land and two mana rocks. And the fact that, like, these mana sources don't make keepable hands means you hurt your consistency a lot with those, with what you're able to keep. And on top of that, it means that in the late game, once you are set up and you had a reasonable hand, you just have so many mana sources, right? Because, like, this deck, for example, has only 23 lands in it, but we have 37 mana sources. We have 14 more cards that basically all they do is make mana. Sure, these have some utility, but largely these cards just make mana. Um, Sundering Stroke... I know it's an Eldrine Carp. It was pretty underwhelming. It was like, okay, I closed out a game a turn before we would have closed out otherwise in a couple of situations. I think we would have won most of the games where this card closed sooner anyways. And especially if you're giving up this card because it's not worth playing, this card becomes markedly worse. And in general, these kind of go big to Ugin decks, I think I still prefer the Black Splash overall because having access to cards like Thoughtseize and Duress goes a long way towards making your matchup against stuff like the Salty deck we just played against from unwinnable to like being pretty close to a coin flip. So I think the utility you get from being having black cards in these go big artifact Ugin ramp decks is better than the utility you get from the red cards in general. Someone asked about the build around decks in the deck queue next week. I before the set release, so on Monday and Tuesday next week, I will not be streaming Arena, but I will be live in the Magic category, and we're going to do two, three, four-hour deck-building sessions each of those mornings we'll, we'll, we, where we will be building all of the decks that are currently listed in the stream queue on, on my website. You can pull those up there for folks that haven't haven't seen that. And we'll also be building some other things that I want to add to the queue. Um, if you're new to the channel, these are all decks that viewers have submitted. For a $50 donation, I would love to play a deck of your choosing on stream at some point in the future. So if you enjoy my content and want to support it a little bit, you can put a deck idea in here and it'll get built on stream next week and then it'll get played on stream at some point in the not too distant future. Usually the turnaround on me playing viewer submitted decks is very quickly like this big red deck that we played today was submitted just earlier this week. But obviously with the Mystical Archives coming up, lots of people are excited. So I'm going to have a bit of a backlog. So if you submit a historic deck to get built next week, it probably won't get played until the Monday or Tuesday after because try as I might, that Thursday and Friday will probably only get get through eight to 10 decks between between those two days. So I like to give decks at least 90 minutes to two hours each day. And I'm human and, and can't be live for more than, more than 10, 10 to 12 hours. Are they letting me play early this time? No, of course not. I'm taking my my schedule for next week is oh look at that. I didn't have I didn't have my personal stuff. But my schedule for next week is already live, so I'm gonna be taking Wednesday Wednesday off 
We'll be doing deck building for sure on Monday. On Tuesday, if um, on Tuesday, if we have more deck building to do, we'll do more deck building, and then we'll do a cube draft if we run out of time. But this will be all deck building if we have enough of it. And then we'll do some variety. And then when the new set drops on Thursday for everybody to play, we'll do a long, long historic streams Thursday, Friday. And then the Hoaglandia Open, our historic open with the Strixhaven cards, is going to be on Saturday the 17th. So I'll be casting that all day with CGB. And then uh, Sunday the 18th, um, Sunday the 18th, I'm going to be playing in a historic tournament. So Insight Esports having an open 5K. So if you want to play a whole weekend of Historic Tournament Magic, you can play the Open on Saturday and the Insight event on Sunday. You're not late, Crunchy. I actually haven't started a second deck yet. So if you want to if you want to submit something to get played today for current Historic, I'd be happy to play. Play something that you send in. I'm like planning on building Storm Herald on stream. Yeah, that'll probably be one of the decks that I update, Sunners. You share a link for the Sunday event. Ah, uh, look on my Twitter. Or search Insight, Insight Esports. We're definitely doing a second historic deck. Crunchy said they want to submit something for today. I'd be happy to play something they submit. Otherwise, I've got other things in. But yeah, I'd be happy to play a submission, Crunchy, if you've got one. Thanks, everybody, for out this morning, by the way. Creates to over 1,100 people in here. If you're new to the channel, I'm here most days during the week as my, the schedule I just set up shows. <laughs> 